Welcome to the Modules Explained section of writing Haskell programs. In this section, we will learn about basics of modules in Haskell, how to create our own modules, and how to consume other people's modules. Welcome to Introduction to Modules. In this video, we're going to talk about the purposes and uses of modules in Haskell, and how modules are named in Haskell. We've already touched on modules a little bit in previous videos, However, in this topic, we'll solidify our understanding of modules before we move on to creating and consuming them in the next couple of topics. Firstly, what are modules for? Well, they're used for namespace control and are directly akin to namespaces in the C++ family of languages such as C++, Java, and C Sharp. They allow developers to reuse names as long as they are unique within a module. Note this is not the same as name overloading that is ubiquitous in C++ and related languages. Names in Haskell are really the fully qualified names including the namespace. Thus, imports of identical names from different modules are always unambiguous. This is a deliberate design choice for language. Haskell does not have to deal with the complexity of the kinds of name resolution rules that many C++ family languages have to implement. Next, modules are typically used to group related entities such as values, including functions of course, types, type synonyms, and type classes. Modules are not first-class values in that they cannot themselves be passed around as values. However, they can be used to arbitrarily partition a Haskell program, where a Haskell program consists of one or more modules. Furthermore, modules are mutually recursive, can refer to one another, and can be defined in any order as can the entities defined within them. They can also be used to provide a simple but effective kind of access control by restricting which functions, including data constructors on a given type, are exported to external scopes and we'll talk more about access control in the next video. Finally, GHC mandates a one-to-one -one correspondence between modules and source files. This is not mandated by the Haskell language specification, but is required by GHC. We've already discussed naming in Haskell. However, let's briefly recap. There are six kinds of names in Haskell. One, variables. Two, data constructors. Three, type variables. Four, type constructors. Five, type classes and six modules. Names have two constraints. Identifiers for variables and type variables must begin with a lowercase letter or an underscore, while identifiers for the other four kinds of name must begin with uppercase letters. Secondly, an identifier must not be used as the name of a type constructor and class in the same scope. Other than that, there are no other constraints. Therefore, for example, int with capital I may simultaneously be the name of a module, a class, and a constructor within a single scope. Let's look at some examples. Firstly, as we noted before, modules must start with uppercase letters. Here we see my app, for example. Names of modules are also extended to allow a sequence of one or more identifiers separated by dots with no intervening spaces. For example, numeric.linear algebra. In this respect, they are pseudo-hierarchical and we tend to find child-parent relationships in the naming conventions. However, this is merely a convention and is not enforced by the compiler or the ecosystem in any way. And conceptually, the complete module identifier is treated as a single identifier occupying a flat namespace. Finally, with GHC, source files are named after the contained module, with dots replaced by the operating system's directory separator. For example, my app would be defined in the source file myapp.hs. Meanwhile, numeric.linear algebra will be defined in numeric backslash linear algebra.hs on Windows or numeric forward slash linear algebra.hs on Linux and Mac OS. Note that these source files are all relative to the appropriate hs source ders value for the appropriate target in your project's cabal file. Let's take a quick look at a more realistic Haskell project to demonstrate some of these conventions. Here we have the project example. We'll expand it. We can see this project contains three subdirectories, app, source, and test, each of which contains a number of source files. App contains the source files for application code. Source contains the source files for library code. Test contains the source files for test cases. We can see our application consists of two modules, demo and main. Our library consists of two modules, quaternion and triplet, and our test suite consists of three modules, main, and one spec source file per library module. In each of these, we get a brief glimpse of how names are exported from and imported into namespaces. For example, this is quaternion.hs, 
defines a module with the name quaternion, exports an algebraic data type, and three functions, qAdd, qMult, and qNeg. The definitions are given here. The quaternion uses record syntax. This is a definition of qAdd, which just adds the components of each of the two input values. This is a multiplication, and this is negation. Similarly, triplet.hs defines a triplet algebraic data type, which is exported, and two functions, tAdd and tNeg, used to add and negate triplets, respectively. Over here we have demo.hs in the application. And this imports both the quaternion and triplet namespaces. And demo itself exports a demo function, the lowercase d, and this is its definition. We create a number of values and add them together and print out the values at the end. Over in main.hs, we import the demo namespace, simply assign that to main. Over in the test directory, we have another main.hs, which is the main entry point for the test project. And this imports the two spec modules, as well as hspec, in order to run the tests. Finally, we can take a look at example.cabal, the project's cabal file, to see how all of this is pulled together. And we see that each of the three targets defines its own separate hs-source-dirs value. So library defines hs source dirs as source. Example app defines hs source dirs as app. Example test defines hs source dirs as test. Within each of these targets, we also enumerate all the modules defined in a given target via one of three mechanisms. In the executable, we see main-is which defines the main entry point for the executable. Test Suite does a similar thing. Over in Library, we expose the modules quaternion and triplet using the expose-modules value. And in the executable target, in the test suite, we define internal modules using the other-modules value. In this case, demo. And in the, and in the case of test suite, quaternion spec and the triplet spec modules. And these are modules included in the target but not exposed directly to referencing targets. Finally, let's build and run our project. We'll open our terminal. We can do stack build minus minus fast bypass optimizations minus minus test to run the test suite minus minus exec to execute a target. We need to execute example dash app. You see it successfully builds and runs the test targets and the executable. We see it passes all the tests. These tests are specified in here and in here. We're using hspec describe and it functions to do that. And the passing tests are all displayed in green. And at the end, it also runs the main program which simply evaluates a demo, which is defined in here, adding these quaternion and triplet values together and printing the results to the terminal.